Good morning, Genesis chapter 15. Left off in 14, Abram went and had war with the kings, kicked a little butt, come back out, give ties to Melchizedek. And now her 15 says, after these things. So after all that, it says, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, fear not, Abram. You get that a lot when they, there's these visitations, visions, whether it be a vision like this or an angel. That freaks people out. It would me. And the message is always, fear not. He says, fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. <clears throat> and Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. <clears throat> so he's talking about that Eliezer. He's still got no child. Remember, he's already been promised that. <clears throat> That's the first thing God, when he got him out of his land, he said, I'm going to make you a great nation. In chapter 13, he said, your seed's going to be as numerous as the dust on the ground. If you can count the dust, that's how your seed's going to be. Watch this. He says, Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be your heir, but he that comes forth of your own bowels shall be your heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if you be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. So the first time he tells him it's going to be like the dust of the earth, now his seed's going to be like the stars of heaven. And that ain't just freely language. It's It's got a purpose because Abram is the father of the faith and many nations. Remember, it was going to be many nations. And through faith, there's going to be two faithful people, an earthly people and a heavenly people. Earthly people being Israel, believing Israel, the remnant. And their promises are always earthly, the land. The kingdom. Uh, you remember Jesus said, The meek shall inherit the earth. You go read what Paul says about the body of Christ. We too are the faithful in Abraham. And all of our promises are heavenly. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Amen. And after that it says, Abraham believed in the Lord and he counted, God counted it to Abram for righteousness. That's a big verse. That gets quoted a bunch in the New Testament. And that's how Abram got it, by just believing what God what God said to him, and it was counted to righteousness. That's the way we get it. And he says, uh, And he said unto him, <clears throat> I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He took he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst. Cut them. This is, this is a covenant. It's, it's called cutting a covenant. And it's done with these animals. Cuts them down the middle, lays them on each side. He says he laid each peach, each peach, each piece, one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. That's interesting. A lot of times you'll see in the Bible, that's a picture of demonic spirits, these birds or devils. And they're trying to interfere with this covenant God's making with Abram, and Abram chases them off. Keep that in mind. It says, And when the sun is going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. So this is a prophecy. This is looking down on down through the generations to when Jacob goes down into Israel or into Egypt, rather. You're going to see that when we get there. But you know the story of, of Egypt and Moses and the Ten Commandments. And that's what he's looking at, that they're going to be slaves for 400 years. <clears throat> it says, also that nation whom they shall serve, which will be Egypt, will I judge. God does some... You know, he's got stuff going on, doesn't he? he? He uses this nation to put Israel in bondage to teach them certain things. But then he turns around and judges Egypt. God's He's like a thousand moves ahead. And he says, and afterward, they shall come out with great substance. There's something else. We've already seen this with Abram. 
God can bless you even in the middle of the storm, can he? They're down there, they're serving, and when they come out, they come out with more than what they went down in with, just like Abram did. And he says, And you shall go to your fathers in peace, and you shall be buried and in good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come here again. Where that in Canaan, the land of Canaan, they're going to come out. In the fourth generation, he says, Watch this, For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Who's that? That's the people that was living in the land of Canaan. We're going to see all these ites at the end of this, but the Amorites in particular, he's giving them a space to repent. While he's working with Israel down in Egypt all those years, he's up here giving these, this bunch a, a space to repent. You see that all through the word, how the long suffering of God, he gave this bunch 400 years. Of course they didn't, and Israel gets set loose on them eventually and runs them out. But think about that. It reminds me of Jesus, the first message that he preached in the synagogue. He quotes from Isaiah, and he talks about the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, Jesus rolled the scroll up at that point, but the rest of that prophecy that he left out was the day of vengeance of the Lord. So you see the long suffering of God just in that, a year that's acceptable to come. But when the vengeance does come and the judgment comes, it's the day of the Lord. Come swiftly. And it says, it, ca it, it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And the Kenites, the, uh, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. So he's given them all that. And you'll notice it was a, in that dream, he's seen the smoking furnace and the burning lamp. You'll see in Hebrews, looking back on this, he's making the covenant with Abram. But how many, how many of you know sometimes man has a hard time keeping a covenant? I don't know if you've made vows to God, but I'm sure if you have at some part, you probably broke them. But God, knowing that he could swear by no greater, it says in the book of Hebrews, looking back at this, swore by himself. So God, that's him, the, the smoking furnace, the burning lamp, that's God making the covenant with himself that it fails not because of Abraham's faith. Amen. That's it for 15. Uh, got a little uh, soap opera type stuff coming up in the next one. So we'll see you then. God bless. <laughs>